Hello everyone and welcome to Factorio. This is a Taku Showout and today we are going to be discussing the mod Actual Craft Time. For those of you who have been watching my tutorial and overview series thus far, please be sure to do all of the social and engagement stuff down below the video if you've been enjoying the content. You can, of course, also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash otakushowboat if you are so inclined and able. So, actual craft time. That is a little GUI that shows up on the screen with a little slider that tells you how much output and input you will be getting from a particular machine's recipe that's currently operating. And you have the ability to slide this, slide it to any particular arbitrary number of machines to see how much output you will get from said recipe. Now you may be able to tell how useful that ends up being in various situations. In this situation, we learn exactly what the output is for any given amount of mining drills, mining on iron. Say, for example, I have this huge patch of iron and I want to know what the theoretical actual output is from this. The theoretical output just because there are some issues with the vanilla mechanics and mining productivity. Uh, and the, how I've designed this, I do lose a little bit of my final production, but we can at least get a ballpark idea of the theoretical maximum, is how I should word that using actual craft time. So we have 378 mining drills on this patch. 378. Unfortunately, I cannot just type in 378 here, but what I can do is go all the way up to 378 and see that I can up obtain up to 207.9 iron ore per second from this patch. Let's also say, so that's that's one example of how to really get to know and use actual craft time uh, is through mining. And this is the value after mining productivity ha has been applied, and it will update. It's also a pretty smart tool overall when it comes to speed and modules and productivity for modules. It will give you the most accurate information it possibly can uh but it will warn you it will warn you if you have a setup involving beacons in particular or any other setup where you have speed modules that are making a recipe attempt to finish more than faster than the actual tick rate of the game, which is once every, or 60 times per second. If a recipe has, through the power of magic and uh, modules and beacons, if it happens to be theoretically going faster than the tick rate of the game, the game can't handle that. It can it limits you to the tick rate on the game. You can only process a recipe once per tick. Productivity is a separate calculation, mind you, and it, uh, productivity can also only be processed once per tick, as far as I am aware. So this will at least display the value, at least I'm... I'm assuming I'm making an assumption here, but it will give you a warning when you're above the tick rate. I don't know if it caps the amount is the is the thing there. So make sure that in order to get an actual accurate value with actual craft time, that you keep your recipes within uh, the tick rate of the game when using modules. So that's a that's a big warning there, uh, and it will come up with some red text saying, "Hey, problems." have occurred because there are you're you're like trying to go faster than the tick rate you can't that doesn't work actual craft time uh in one very specific case with the pinodons mods mod suite and using the particular module in that of high alien life 
this will now floor productivity at zero uh, because there are modules for alien life in there that have a negative productivity uh, and it used to be the case that this would take into account negative productivity and reduce the output when the game does actually floor it at zero uh, and now this is accurate uh, in those cases with that being said the other primary way of using actual craft time is to determine the actual requirements and products of an arbitrary number of buildings. Say, while yes, you can do this in something more advanced like Hellmod, say I just want something at a glance or something more quickly obtainable because I don't want to go into like the hell mod UI, go add a production line for a thing and be like, go into the, the factory input, uh, compute by factory and put in like an arbitrary factory count to get what the output would be with the requisite inputs for that. I, I don't want to go through all those steps. Uh, I want to save some time. And this lets you save a little bit of time by being like, hey, what if I have like, or or what, uh, how many do I need to get 15, for example, of, of these electric engine units? How many buildings do I need to get 15? I need 200 of these buildings to get 15 and 225 lube and 15 regular engine units and 30 electronic circuits. Now I know just by doing this with this slider here. I will also note, I have very, very specifically set this up to make those of you who use actual craft time have a bit of a question mark. Because if you've been watching my videos thus far and you've watched how I use actual craft time, it doesn't look like this. Normally, it's up here on the very top of the screen, not on the left side like this, The sli and, and the slider is limited to only 200 building. Uh, on here for the number of machines it, it's it can now for me go up to 500 and it's here on the left how does one change this well this is part of a mod setting of per player per player mod setting where you can actually change the location from the top to the left you can set anywhere between 25 and infinity on the building slider this is specifically that building slider note that while you can change this on the fly it doesn't update the GUI immediately. You will have to reload uh, for that, so keep that in mind. The slider, if you don't move the location, will stick with the previous max on the physical slider GUI. So going in and grabbing this, the physical slider here will cap at 200 and I can show that really quickly by going in and changing the position back to top. If I change the position back to top because I have just changed this, if I move the slider, see how the slider caps at 200 here when I have it at the top, I can continue to move it by using the buttons. We can go all the way up to 500, control click all the way up to the max, the actual max, but it will stick back to 200 here until I restart. I'm assuming it will fix itself once I restart uh, the game. Uh, but if I change it to the left, it's had to now draw, like, do that update. So this this one will do the full 500 for me by changing the position. Anyway, that is a basic overview note that you can change the scale to per minute here on this but i don't tend to think about things in terms of minutes i tend to think of things in terms of seconds and amount of stuff per second so anyway that i think is a very good brief overview of how to use actual craft time what the benefits are of it and also a few warnings about it uh, one additional warning in particular if you are playing with the pandons mods mod suite and a few others 
that you may occasionally get the wrong icon displayed, uh, specifically with fluids uh, that I've noticed. Well, fluid slash gas, but they're, they're effectively the same thing in terms of the code uh, and how they function. Uh, you'll often end up seeing the recipe icon that makes the ingredient rather than the ingredients dedicated icon that has been a bit of a bug with actual craft time for a really long time. It might be fixed in the future, it might not, so just keep in mind, occasionally you'll see, like, with water electrolysis on the pie suite, that the ingredients of hydrogen or oxygen will very often have the electrolysis icon rather than the actual hydrogen or oxygen icon. That is just a a bug uh, on the display there. If you hover over the icon, it will also tell you the recipe name rather than the actual ingredient. So you have to be very careful uh, and pay attention to what the actual ingredients are in your machine that you're looking at uh, there uh, with that. So with that, folks, and with all of that said, a uh, few caveats on how to properly use this. Uh, it is merely a way to figure out either what the output is for a given number of machines or to figure out what the output would be for a given number of machines. So we can either go from output or or input really if we want to know well if I have if if I have 10 circuits we can just move the slider around until we get to 10. It's not uh, yeah, so once we get to 10 it's like okay, if my 10 electronic circuits I'll make that much and it needs that many machines. Great, now I know. Just a very simple, quicker way of figuring out these various questions. Uh, either how much can I get out for a given input? How many inputs will I need for a given output? How many machines will I need for a given output? How many machines will I need given a certain input? Uh, and then what the inputs would be and outputs would be at a given machine. So all that sort of stuff can be a lot more quickly gleaned from this and you can also more easily determine like what the outputs are on your mining setups uh, from this. Uh, it's not as accurate with oil because oil is based off of an internal fluid box and it's better to just put a tank in front of an oil well to get a better idea of what the actual output is per second there just so you're aware about that. Uh, but yeah, with that, I would like to thank you all for watching. This has been Ataku Shibut. If you have enjoyed today's video, please be sure to do all of the social and engagement stuff down below. And of course, uh, a reminder that I you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Ataku Shibut if you are so inclined and able. And I will, of course, see you all on the next one.